What's up, you guys? Hey, it is uh, 8.22 Wednesday night. And, uh, of course, I didn't get off work to about 7.30 or so. And, uh, man, I got to work on my four-wheeler. I got to try and get the valve clearance right because I'm going to need that thing to be traveling <laughs> to the uh, to that newfound beaver dam. And I want to ride it, too, for fun. So I got to get it right. Uh, it's late. I can't really believe I'm about to start working on it, but... I wanted to do sort of like a tutorial, but it's dark. I don't know how that's going to come out. I might record a little bit of it, but uh, yeah. So let me get to it. <laughs> so I had uh, somebody on YouTube to comment and say that before I check the valves that I need to warm it up. So I'm going to let it run uh, for a little bit before I start taking it apart so it can warm up a little bit. Give it a little gas there. So it's run for about a, a minute and a half, maybe two, and I'm touching the cylinder there. It's feeling pretty warm. So first I got to get the plastics off and, uh, Hey, my, my Tahoe is junky. Don't mind that. Okay. <laughs> but I want to pop out all of the plastic, uh, pluggy thingies. And, uh, I usually use a screwdriver with two screwdrivers to pull them out with. And I do one. And to keep from making the video so long, I'll do one and show you it. But I'm going to go ahead and pull the others out. Actually, let me, uh, while I'm with you, we'll go ahead and uh, take off the seat. There's two there. There's two there that I take off. And there's one there, like what was over here. And... I think that's it, you guys. It might be two under there. I have to remember. No, I think that's the two that I'm thinking about right there. But yeah, we're gonna get these, get these, uh, I forgot the name of them. These thingies, get them pulled out. <laughs> so we can get the cover, get the plastics off. I'm tired, so I'm gonna be fumbling all over my words. But like I said, I gotta make a start on this thing at least, you guys. So you gotta take the gas cap off to get these side panels out and mine is sort of raggedy so they they come loose real easy <laughs> yep there we go i'll just leave this on this side over here and then take this part off just throw that over there and put the gas cap back on and then I think these two bolts here on the gas tank are 10 millimeters. Okay. Be nice to have a battery powered gun right now. Really, you don't want to use a battery powered gun on a lot of this stuff. This right here wouldn't hurt, especially loosening. Loosening ain't so bad, but when you come to tightening, you want to make sure you get your bolts torqued to the right spec with stuff. And uh, that way you don't over tighten. So I got those out and now I got to loose the gas line. Oh, I got to cut the gas back off too. Take the gas line off. Okay. So this will come off now. The gas tank will come off. All right. What's next? I just put some gloves on because it's about to get a little messy because it's dirty and oily in here. I did find this little light. I forgot I got this little light. So. Um, let's start loosening some clamps up and this ain't necessarily the The steps you take you can go about it different ways This is how I'm just gonna do it. It's been a little while since I've done it And I thank God because I ain't there was one point in time. I was going in this motor too much Because the head gasket kept blowing. 
I didn't I didn't know that I needed to tighten the head gasket uh, to 43 foot pounds of torque. The book says 33, and that's why I kept blowing head gaskets. So for years and years, I kept having having head gasket issue issues, and uh, that's why. So uh, pulled that hose off of there, and this is the spark plug wire here it's in there pretty good pull that out of there man that's a little dirty there get that out of the way and pull this hose off get that out of the way okay so you got these uh hex head sockets here that 10 millimeter is for the the, um, the side of the engine to take the, the plug out there and then you got another size to take out what size is this uh, eight millimeter to take out that plug to check to make sure that it's at top dead center and then you got uh, you got a six millimeter hex head to take off the valve cover bolts and then that five millimeter is for the cam uh, what is it, the cam journals that goes over the cam, uh, over the cams. So that's that five millimeter. So we are going to firstly take off the valve cover bolts. And of course you always like to try and loosen them up evenly so that one side isn't got all the pressure on it. Ooh, that's tight. Ooh, that's tight. Oh, man, that was tight. Okay. I do normally tighten that side the tightest because them, I had to put some heli coil. Well, I had a guy to do it for me in the cam journal um, threads because the threads had stripped out on that side. So, yeah, that's why you want, don't want to over tighten stuff. And this, this is a 2005 model, so it's old and it's worn. So, <laughs> got to be careful with older stuff all right so I got those loose and I do sort of like to try and put them back in the same exact place so I'm just gonna set it here on my truck in the order that I took it out of and the valve cover will come off okay I'm taking off that six millimeter that took off the valve cover gasket now and uh, I still got this top dead center uh, bolt in here so I'm gonna take that out so that we can make sure we see the line to get it at top dead center and I have not loosened the, uh, the timing chain yet uh, I got a manual cam chain tensioner so I have to loosen it by hand and unfortunately the nut came off the end of it so I might have to turn it with some pliers Lord have mercy that's what happens when you buy cheap stuff <laughs> sit that in there and take that off and now I'm gonna loosen up this side bolt here this is how you turn the engine uh, yeah let's let's try the 17 yep that's it so now we want to you probably can't see it but down in there there's a line and you want to turn it to top dead center when it and usually the cam lobes the cam lobes will be at 10 and 2 that side will be pointing at 10 and that side will be pointing at 2 I got to look for the line in here okay so that's at the line so that's top dead center right there mm -hmm. now we can check with the feeler gauge what the measurement is that's the that's the exhaust side that's the intake side you want that to be between i think it's uh what is it 10 and uh, 15 i think it is let me get my paper okay so yeah the valve clearance is usually between 0.10 to 0.20 and the exhaust valves are usually from Point 20 to point 30 so I like to get it in the middle so I like for it to be about point 15 
in about 0.25 so let's check it all right so i got my little paper out you can see where i've done it before i've uh <laughs> checked the, the valve clearance to have my little setup or whatever so i got the ex there and intake there and i'm going to get this measurement again lord have mercy i guess i'm not good at recording and doing numbers at the same time Okay, so that side is about 27 or 28. I'll say it's probably about 28. It's point 0.28. And this side over here was probably like 26 maybe. Let me see. Let me get that, tw get that 25 again. Oh, that's, that's maybe about... I don't know, that might be about 27. Not 27, and it won't go under there. So I say it's about 26. That's about 26. Now let's check the intake side. I'm going to start with maybe a 15, since that's where I like for it to be. A 15 goes under there pretty good. That 15. So let's try. Let's try uh, 17 is the next size up. That 17 won't go under there. That's 17 will not go under there. So 15 is good for that one. That one is uh, 0.15. That's what I want it to be at there. And let's do the other side. Let's try that 17 on the other side. Ooh. Ooh, wait a minute. Is that? Okay, that's where you... That 17... That 17 uh, was loose under there big time. So let's go to a... 20 let's go to a 20 oh that 20 is that might be where that noise coming from that 20 is uh loose under there too you guys so let's see let's try 22 a point 22 that 22 is tight so hmm yeah that 20 that 22 is tight. So let me go back to the 20. So it might be like 21 maybe. Yeah, I'm thinking that's maybe, I'm thinking it's about 21. So we'll say 0.21, okay? Now I wanna loosen up the cam chain uh, tensioner. It's 11 16th nut on it. I'm gonna loosen it up before we loosen up the bolts on the uh, on the camshafts so that there's no pressure, you know, on it. So we got that loose. And now I'm gonna switch the hex head to the smallest size, which was the five millimeter. And we're going to loosen them counterclockwise. Loosen them counterclockwise. A little at a time. Here a little, there a little. This is my first time taking it apart since putting this FCR carburetor on here. So it's got that wire right there and the way I had to change the, uh, the, the thumb throttle. So it's got a different cable there. It's in a different position, I'll say. Usually it used to run over here on this side, but now it's on that side over there. So, so we're gonna get those loose and then we'll get the exhaust side loose. Same thing, counterclockwise loosening a little at a time so that not one bolt has all the pressure on it. And we'll repeat those steps until they're all out. 
All right, so I got all of the bolts loose and uh, I actually have made this little cardboard image, whatever you want to call it. You stick the bolts in that go in the correct place to keep up with them. Like I said, I like to try and put all the bolts back in the same hole or whatever. So <laughs> it's a shoebox cover here that goes in there. And then your cam chain thingy dirty. Uh, put it over here. And pull that off. Intake side and the exhaust side, the cam journals. Set them over here. And now I gotta get me a piece of wire. Alright, so I got this piece of wire here to hold the chain up. So that the chain doesn't drop down in there. And I'm going to put it up there like that to hold that up. And uh, that's your intake. So I'm going to set that in this box over here. And I guess I need to get a magnet. I need to get a magnet. Which. So that was 15. I won't, I'm not going to mess with the inside one, but that 21, we have definitely got to work on that 21. So let me get a magnet. I got to find my magnet. All right, so I got the magnet, and we're going to pull that bucket out of there. A lot of the times you got a magnet, it's going to pull the, the shim out as well, which it did. It pulled the shim from off of the, um, the spring, and you can be careful because it's on the inside of there. So... You stick it out, not stick it out, take it out with the magnet. And I'm going to stick this in the box here. And so there's a measurement to get the, the desired size. It's the measured size, which is 0.21 minus the desired size. So we want 15, right? I get the, uh, the phone out and do the math in a bit. And then it says plus the existing. So this is the existing. This is what's in here. So it's a, we can see the number on it. It's a 2.65. So it has a 2.65 in there. So let me get my uh, shim set. All right, you guys. So let's go back. So I said measured. So it's going to be. Point twenty one. Don't mind my writing. Minus we want it to be point fifteen, and that's and then oh yeah plus the plus the what was it two point six five two point six five. All right, so let's do that on the calculator. So uh, point twenty one minus. 0.15 plus 2.65 equals so it needs a 2.71 in there okay so it needs a 2.71 in there um i got this hot cams i got this hot cams set here so it needs a two what was it a 2.71 so that's right, let's see, that's a 2.70 right there. So I think, I think if I go, uh, maybe that'd be, yeah, we, we'll do it this, because it goes in increments of five. So we'll do it to 2.70. We do point 2.70. All right, so I'm gonna take that 2.70 out of there. It looks like I've used that one before because it's got a little bit of, a little bit of rust on it. So 2.70. And we're going to take that 2.65 and put it back in here. 2.65. 2.65. Right there. 2.65. Okay. And you always want to try to, when you put it in there, put the number side up so that it doesn't wear. It doesn't wear on the, on the spring. Let me get the magnet and do it because... I beat and dropped it. So put the number side up 
and we'll stick it in there like that and put the bucket back in there and now I'll I guess I need to probably do both of those to get it get it on the lower side you know so it don't be so much space so I'm gonna do the same exact thing well you know what I'll I'll do it on camera okay all right you guys so I put a 3.5 in on this side over here I don't even know if the camera is angled right or everything man I'm just doing this thing <laughs> at least you can hear me talking so this is the fun part putting the cam back in you got to get it lined up and make sure it's at 10 and 2 um, it has three marks on it so usually you count 15 pins between the two marks that's on the cams it's usually 15 pins not pins lord <laughs> 15 uh oh yeah it is pins yeah that's right that's right that's right lord have mercy i'll be glad when i'm done here <laughs> i gotta loosen this up now because it's you're putting both of them back in there uh oh don't do that don't do that timing chain stay in place stay in place i can take that off of there now because it's pulling on it way too hard I'm going to have to go around the other side anyway because okay and you actually need to put some grease on this thing I don't got no well I do got some grease it ain't the kind of grease that actually going here but I'm going to put a little bit in it so the 10 and 2 position that right there looked like it's down too far already. So you see them pins there? You probably can't see it. But anyway, you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, wait a minute. That might be right. I don't know. That, that exhaust cam looked like it's angled down a little bit too far, though. And this one looked like it's too high. Let me see. Let me see. Ooh. Yeah, I think, I think I need to, I need to turn this one down, the intake cam, I need to turn it down one notch. Let me get it straight, all right, you guys, all right, you guys, I think I got it where it's supposed to be. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm going to put a little bit of grease in here. I need to get the right kind of grease, but a little bit of grease will, will help it out. I think I got it at 10 and 2, but you know, it will definitely tell when you go to try to crank it. Either it's going to fire right up or it's going to struggle trying to crank. If it struggles trying to crank, then you know you ain't got it. You know you got your, your timing off. The last time I put it together, <laughs> I guess I was rushing so much, it was off because that joker was hard to crank. I said, man, I got to take it back apart. I got to take it back apart. And I had to take it back apart. So we put them back on there. And uh, I'm hoping that it's right. We're going to put the, the bolts in. Oh, no, let me not put that one in yet. Because I want to check it before we, you know, do the final tightening of everything. I want to check it out. So I'm going to get them tightened up. And check back in yeah you guys so uh i'm taking them back out because i forgot i wanted to check the head bolts i wanted to torque them make sure they're still at a good spec so i'm taking this back out Take all right so i got my my torque ratchet here and i think that's 30 so this is 40 and that's 43 right there 43 and I didn't take I didn't take the uh <laughs> I didn't take them out. I'm gonna check this side. If this side is okay, I'm gonna rock with it. I don't wanna take it back out. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's good. And that's still good. So you guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna rock with it. I'm trusting and believing that that other side is still good. Alright. So my head bolts, that's 43. 
Yeah, that's 43. All right, you guys, so I got the cam journals back on. I don't have those two bolts super tight, well, you know, torqued down yet, just in case I have to take it back off. But I got it tight enough to where that cam chain, when I turn it, because I'm going to turn it with the ratchet a couple of revolutions to make sure that it sets right, to make sure that the um that the shims set right and that the buckets are, are sitting right. Uh, so that that timing chain don't jump timing while I'm turning it because that's what that I remember That's what happened last time. I was turning it by hand and uh, That joker It jumped timing when I was turning it so like I said, I'm gonna give it a few revolutions here And y'all didn't tell me the light was in the way. I didn't know the light was in the way <laughs> So I moved it down Anyway Like I said, this is extra anyway. This video, I figured I'll give you a, a, a minor tutorial. Okay, so I think, ooh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that don't look right, you guys. Don't tell me it done jump timing anyway. I'm looking at these cam lobes. Oh my Lord. Wait a minute. Okay, I need the light back up here. Because I can't see the timing mark. Lord, don't tell me. All right, you guys. So uh, my battery had died. But anyway, I think it's still right. I was saying it looked like it was off. But it must not have been at top dead center. But anyway, let's let's check them now. Um, I'm going to check the intake side first. That's, that's a 15 there. So, okay, that 15. I like how that 15. That was, we didn't even mess with that side. I'm tripping. <laughs> this is the side over here that we need to check okay that 15 is feeling a little snug it's, it's a little loose though but that's that's about how you want it i like that i like that 15 under there you guys let me try let me try uh a 17 a 17 shouldn't fit Oh yeah, that 17 is not fitting. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Now let's we change both of them. Let's try a 25 for the exhaust side. A 25. Can't hardly see it. There we go. Let's try 25. 25. Ooh. That's pretty tight. Let's try 25 on that side. That's tight. Oh. Oh man, that's that 25 ain't fitting, so let's see. Because we did go a bigger size, so this 22 should definitely fit under here. The 22 should definitely fit. That's a little tight. Wait a minute. Hey, okay, that 22 goes under there. Good. That 22 goes under there. But it's a little tight over here. That 22 is a little tight over there, you guys. Oh, man. Man. Let me see. Let me try 20. That 20 ought to go under there real good. Hey, now. Okay. That 20. That 20 is a little. Okay. Man. I might not should have messed with this one. <laughs> I really don't. I really don't want to take it off. I don't think I'm going to take it off, though. That 20 is, man, 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 <laughs> I'm going to leave it though. We're going to listen to it. Let me try that 22 again. Whew. Maybe if it runs a little bit, it'll loosen up. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to tighten everything back up get everything situated and I'll check back in. Cause I know this video been long, probably too long already. All right, you guys, I'm tightening up the bolts for the valve cover. And, uh, of course, like I said, I don't need to. Oh, no. Why does that feel like that's stripping? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, you guys. That's not good. That's not good at all. Man. I wasn't even pulling on it hard. <laughs> what I told you earlier. Put a snug on it. That thing feel like it's stripping. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna turn it no more. Maybe 
it's tight enough to where it won't leak, but it sure enough, it just stripped on me right on camera. Jeez. All right, so I think that's good enough. All right, so we got that hose hooked back up. We got that hose hooked back up. Got the spark plug connected. Got the, the top dead center bolt back in and the side plug back in. We got the timing chain tight. Now we got to put the gas tank on and connect the fuel line. And then I think we'll be able to crank it up. All right, I didn't put the bolts in the gas tank yet, just in case, but I'm having faith that it's going to be right, okay? So this is the moment of truth. We're about to crank it up. We're about to crank it up. I'm going to choke it again, being that it didn't run a long time. I'm going to choke it. Here we go, you guys. Here we go. <laughs> That's still rather noisy, ain't it? I think that's still sort of noisy, you guys. I know I got to change the oil, but like I said, if I got to go back in it, I don't want to change it yet, but that, that's still sort of noisy. Hmm. Maybe it just needs to warm up for a good while or whatever and be ridden for a little bit, but I'm not going to do it tonight. I want it to do at least that much, and I'll change the oil and everything another time. Um, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I guess we'll have to see. Let me fire it. At least it fired right up. That let me know that the timing is right. Let me fire it up again. It's still clacking clacking there but anyway that's that you guys <laughs> that's anyway that's how you check your valve clearance and get the measurements and everything at least you got you learned that much now i got to figure out why it's still making all that noise <laughs> well anyway you guys stay blessed you guys keep encouraged and as always we'll see you in the next 